Hi, this is Brian Wilson for BFW Classroom, and today we're going to look at creating wall templates for your badges. So you'll see here I opened up a Google Drawing set inside of Google Docs. Uh, this is part of the Google Work Suite, in case you didn't know. And I went ahead and dropped some of my badges onto a template that was using the uh, 16 by 10 layout, the wide layout. Um, I chose that one because of the way that most computer screens are laid out in the, in the sections. I dropped in some words, some text boxes, and uh, changed it. Most of the big things that you'll see here are the copy and paste formats that you typically would do in any Google project. I just picked one, dropped it in. I did try to collect all these into one place, but here you'll see some of the things I did together. Um, I did group all of them, and once you do group them, if you collect a background or choose a background that has the uh, same kind of non-flat format like I did with a wall here, you can create borders on them which if it's a square, it will create a basic or simple border that you can use to create depth. But some of these odd shaped pieces like the STLP one or the National Writing Project, anything that's not a square or a circle, it won't necessarily do anything. So it'll make the boxes around what the format is set at. I didn't really like that. So what I ended up doing was going back in and actually taking the images, I still have them grouped together as one image, and I turned on the drop shadow. Now, with this, it'll have some presets, and what you have to notice is that where your light is coming from if you're using a background. So this background, this wall background that I picked, has a wall setting or has a light setting coming from the upper right. So I moved my angles on the shadows for each piece, so that way it showed that the, the light was coming sort of from the right and the top. Uh, some of the things that you'll notice is each piece has its own sort of edging. I like this better than creating the block, the, the around part. Um, I, you, you do have to fudge with it a little bit, see how much depth you want on each one or distance. I do like to get rid of the blurring, uh, simply because where all of these pieces are slightly uh, nonlinear in their edges, it makes it more crisp, gives that shadow, that look, creates the depth, almost makes it look like it's a, a sign hanging on the brick wall that you've already chosen for your background. Now, one piece I had to change differently was the National Writing Project piece, where it uses gray font instead of white edges, which all the rest of them do have white edges, except for probably the Google Educator piece. I went back in, and if you choose black, it makes it too dark. It does grab the W. If you use white, it ends up being too light. So I went sort of with this in-between gray piece, and then just sort of tweaked it a little bit, made sure the edges and the angles were about in a place that I liked. It wasn't too dramatic, but it ended up making the piece look good. Now one of the things you'll notice with these pieces up here is that with the lettering, it has the shadowing coming in on each edge, but also when you do this piece over here, my logo piece that I built in Adobe Spark, I have empty spots in it. So it has an outer circle and an inner piece, and there's empty spots or empty space in between negative space. You can see how it drops the shadow in to create these layering pieces to give it that depth, sort of give it so more of that that kind of real piece to it and not just sort of the flatness that you might have on um, a regular background. And then uh, if you wanted to make any changes, you could go in and look for, for pieces themselves. I don't recommend doing that inside of here. I always recommend trying and pulling your pieces because you never know what you're gonna get or if you're actually gonna get badges that are appropriate or tasked correctly. One of the best features of using a Google Drawing is that you can take the drawing and post it to a web page like you see here. This is an example of my online portfolio. Now when you do this, it is a live document. Um, so the great part about it is as you make changes, it'll go live to the web page. It'll also make a separate spot loaded online where someone can look at it and see the details as you have parts of it. Like always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. If you don't mind, hit subscribe here on the right, or watch one of the videos from my playlist here on the left. Again, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom.